I'm going to be perfectly upfront about this one. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is not good. It's very bad. And like, actually bad. Not flawed, but still enjoyable, kind of like Sonic Adventure 2. I mean, it's really bad. The most obvious factor to point out is how poorly built the game is in general. The game runs at a horrendous frame rate at all times. It's consistently below 30, and it'll frequently get worse than that. It's most noticeable during the combat sequences, and just painful during any kind of speed section. This isn't a nitpick, this ruins a lot of the gameplay, especially during speed sections, as the low frame rate makes it impossible for you to properly react to what's coming at you. Even lame mundane sections can be made more frustrating by how awful the game performs. Frame rate aside, the game looks bad. Textures are extremely low quality, lighting effects are simple, and the overall art style and quality is archaic. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that this was in HD, it would fit right in on the PlayStation 2. Not even just the graphics are bad, the game's presentation as a whole is terrible. Numerous cutscenes lack integral sound effects, negating a lot of impact that these cutscenes should have. The game's entire soundtrack is forgettable. Generic orchestra sounds without any kind of real direction. High action moments do not have corresponding music, effectively killing the tones of so many different gameplay and cinematic scenes. Not a single track stands out. You'll only be reminded that the music exists when there is somehow no other sounds happening. Which is near impossible, since every character in this game does not shut up. As a means to drill their new one-note personality straight into your face, every single character is constantly spouting one-liners. They're all attempts at humor, and they'll get a chuckle from only the youngest of unfortunate people who happen to be playing this game. Dialogue between characters is so disjointed, they each sound like they're talking to people who don't exist. Otherwise, they're always stating the obvious, such as when they see a button, or how much they love rings, or every single time they see a bounce pad. Calling it grading is an understatement. This is all on top of a terrible plot involving a snake who hates the environment for some reason, some crystals, and time travel. It wastes so many elements throughout the entire six-hour campaign, such as having Shadow show up for a grand total of ten minutes, only to serve as a worthless boss fight. I'm only scratching the surface of the game's many problems. The gameplay is atrocious. It's a mix of fighting, running, and puzzle exploration, and each one of these can be summed up in a single word. Boring. Combat is mashing on a simple attack button for every character, or you can press X for a special attack, such as Sonic's homing attack, or Knuckles doing a breakdance of some sort. There is no way to combine these attacks, and you rely solely on the game's gravitational pull towards enemies to actually land any attack. This makes every single fight imprecise, chaotic, and infuriating. And they bizarrely included a combo rating meter with no real benefit from it whatsoever. You also have a laser whip thing that allows you to grab enemies and throw them, but you feel zero impact from hitting them into things, making the amount of damage you deal when throwing questionable. Enemies take far too many hits to be destroyed, often having extended invulnerability periods, and it's all so tedious. At no point did I enjoy any combat sequence. Nor did I enjoy any speed sequence. These are peppered throughout the game. The constant camera angle switching and bouncing around makes it impossible to follow the action in any of them, especially with the aforementioned awful frame rate. There is a single time when it's tolerable, and that's during a repetitious boss fight against Metal Sonic. Further breaking up these fun-feigning sections are what can only be described as puzzles. The puzzles boil down to get to a button and press it, or sometimes you pull on a thing with your laser thing. These allow each of the characters to use their unique trait. Amy's triple jump, Knuckles can climb, Tails' ability to fly, and Sonic's pathetically short spin dash. These immediately start as mundane, as you must traverse way more ground than you would expect just to press a single button. There's no real part allowing any kind of player intuition, such as using one teammate to do their portion, and then switching to another to allow them to continue, and then switching back. It's essentially numerous mini-levels for each character, lacking any kind of depth or entertainment value. The monotony does not end there. For whatever reason, Sonic Boom features an empty, barren hub world, where you go from one level to another or complete side quests. The hub world demonstrates a major issue with Sonic Boom as a whole, a lack of conveyance to the player. 
Far too many times did I get lost on where my current objective was because of no clear direction. The hub area is a bland place. It was so barren I found myself wishing for robots to fight so I had something to do. Even though fighting is just as boring as slowly running around with Sonic's top speed of a leisurely stroll. It's also a surprisingly confusing place and you don't even get a map for it until about one third into the game. And even then, the map lacks any kind of functionality to make it useful, such as clear pathways through terrain to other areas, or the direction you are facing to help guide you to where you need to be. You can do side quests for unlockables, such as concept art or more useful things like runestones that provide passive powers or upgrading abilities. The upgradable abilities lack any kind of value and I forgot about them until the end of the game, save for one useful one that is locked behind a paywall. Rings work as your health in this game, making you lose some with every hit. Sonic and his friends can only carry a maximum of 100, which isn't a problem because rings are everywhere. You can increase your maximum ring count, but you must link Rise of Lyric to your copy of Sonic Boom on the 3DS to unlock it, essentially making this actually useful ability cost at least $40. Another feature is multiplayer co-op, but the sacrifices made for it are not worth it. Player 1 plays on the gamepad, player 2 plays on the TV. However, the very instant a second player jumps in, the graphics get worse. Textures are even blurrier, lighting effects are removed completely, and the already awful frame rate is lowered even further. Co-op makes the game worse in every way. Now you could argue that this game is made for younger kids and most of these things would be made acceptable because of that, and I would strongly disagree. Even kids would get disappointingly bored by the entirety of the game, and with the real lack of direction in many areas, nearly all younger players will only grow in frustration as they can't figure out how to get to the next bit of action. It isn't good by a child's standards either. And yes, there is an exploit you can use to skip over three-fourths of the entire game. This is in contrast to a number of glitches that can halt your progress entirely. It's really bad. And not bad, but weirdly enjoyable in a way, like Sonic 06. It's not a complete broken mess, it's just bad. It's poorly optimized and looks and runs like garbage, and lacks any kind of quality assurance put into it to see if the game is even fun. The puzzles are mundane, the speed running sections are dull, and the combat is so tedious. It lacks polish in so many areas, this game was undoubtedly shoved out the door with complete disregard for personal standards. And even for Sonic fans, this isn't one of those games where you can find things to defend. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric earns a 2 out of 10. And if you are a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, well, I hear the new cartoon show is pretty good.